What's going on, Doombots? Tony Scangilli here with his team review, long-awaited, The Brotherhood. Now, you guys might not know, but I tend to wait for most of the characters to be farmable, or at least be announced to be farmable, accessible in the game, before I do a full review of the team, which is why you haven't really seen a Black Order review. But finally, not only do we have Toad in the Blitz store, we're about to get Blob in the Arena store, so it's time to talk about the Brotherhood. And when you talk about the Brotherhood, we start talking about how modular it is, how unique the characters work together, and just what they are and what they mean for your game. Let's go right into it as we talk about their availability, their accessibility, and just overall, their usability. Let's do a random blitz fight. This, seems, this should be fine, I think. Let's take a quick look. So good news is, there's only one legendary character on this team right now, and it's Magneto. He requires Brotherhood or X-Men in order to unlock any combination of them. Not mutants, Brotherhood characters or X-Men characters. So that's the first one. Uh, Mystique is available at a relatively early villain's farm. Pyro is available in the War Store. Sabretooth in the Raid Store. Juggernaut in the Arena Store with Blob, who will be coming into the Arena Store probably by the time this video goes live. And uh, Toad, being one of the newest characters, just added into the Blitz store. They're relatively easy to access early, uh, with one exception, uh, and that exception, of course, being Sabretooth isn't incredibly easy to come by. Uh, the new characters, uh, not so much Blob, because Juggernaut was always there, have made it so that it's really, really easy for a player to unlock Magneto, if he is their sole target. Obviously, to unlock Magneto, you can use X-Men as well, and we all know we get a relatively free Wolverine just for locking in every day. So you only actually need four characters, and all of them are accessible pretty much from the minute you start playing the game. Whether it be the War Store for Pyro, either of the characters in the Arena Store, I recommend Juggernaut, we'll get into that later, you'll be able to do pretty well when you're working on them. That said, when we go into the conversation about usability, you're going to see that they're not quite uh, a well-rounded team. They don't do a lot for you, but what they do, 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 uh, they're very good at. So let's go into that conversation about usability and determine what you're going to use them for. So, Brotherhood's usability. I think it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. Until you have Magneto, this team doesn't quite function uh, as it should. Magneto, much like many legendaries, are the uh, kind of missing link to make the characters work together. Uh, there are no right or wrong characters. There is no right or wrong comp for the team. The general consensus is that the core of the Brotherhood team has always been Magneto, Juggernaut, and Pyro, uh, and that's mostly due to how the characters interact with each other. Magneto groups everyone, Pyro literally hits everybody with every attack, so it's a giant AoE, and then Juggernaut's charge runs him over. The other characters are situational at best, but there is no one right or wrong comp, there's just the best uses of the characters. Obviously Sabretooth and Mystique also have the Marauder's Tag, it doesn't mean they're not a good fit for the Brotherhood anymore. It just means they have a different home by the time you actually unlock characters like Sinister Strife or whomever the additional Marauders will be as time goes on. So, where do we use the Brotherhood? Well, one thing that's kind of important is that the Brotherhood isn't inherently a raid team. So, that's one entire game mode you just don't get to use them. That said, they are uh, what I like to classify as raid assassins, where you could put together these characters on like a boss node and pretty much be sure you're going to be able to beat the team. So they, they're not quite a raid team. They don't have sustain. You might be able to make a little bit of a hybrid. Uh, there's one raid node specifically, or raid lane, I guess, specifically in Gamma, that asks for X-Men or Brotherhood characters, since neither of those teams are particularly phenomenal at being a raid team, you end up having to use them in almost a sacrificial manner as you pair them with other types of characters like mercenaries or whatever you happen to have uh, 
uh, to kind of progress a little bit more. Now, once you remove raid, now you start seeing some good value. As far as an arena team goes, characters like Magneto, Juggernaut, uh, to some extent Sabretooth, they work very well in, in arena, uh, both on offense and defense. Even to this day, you can still see some relatively high invested Magnetos and Juggernauts paired with some of the comps you may have seen over the time, like Phoenix or Black Bolt. They just interact very well. Uh, so the characters themselves may have value in arena, but the Brotherhood, while once used to be the arena team, has kind of fallen off due to power creep. That said, when you get the Brotherhood, you should still have a very relatively good time using them in arena, at least for attack. Characters like Magneto and Juggernaut do a very good job of, of countering most teams. Magneto basically numbs every team on the first turn by blinding everyone, except as Guardians, but even then, he pulls everybody together. A, a feature that no one else in the game at this time has, he moves characters uh, super huge. So as an arena team, they're usable, but it's more about the strength of certain characters, like the legendary, obviously, than it is about the entire team. Once you get to war, that's where they start shining. War is where the Brotherhood works the best. The original Brotherhood, being Magneto, Pyro, Juggernaut, and then Sabretooth and Mystique, was widely regarded as the best, one of, one of, if not the best offense team in the game. It was able to beat pretty much any defense based on investment in a punch-up. They were just really good at that. They had the depth. It wasn't until Coulson and Shield, uh, which was their original design, was to be able to counter Shield, it wasn't until Coulson and Shield that they kind of lost a step. And when Blob and Toad came out, that gave them back that little bit extra. Uh, so, like I said, regardless of which characters you put together for the team, uh, as long as the core Magneto, Juggernaut, and Pyro are there, you're going to have an absolutely phenomenal overall experience using them in war. They're very capable of beating quite a few meta teams with moderate investment in certain characters, which we're going to get into when we talk about breakpoints. The only other thing I'd like to point out, and this is a little bit unique, is that some of these characters individually provide a lot of value in very unique situations. Magneto, while very low cooldowns, does interact relatively well with characters like Symbiote Spider-Man because of how the timing of their turns work out. Magneto might be able to pull and blind everybody on a raid node together, and then Symbiote Spider-Man will be able to extend that blind, basically making sure nobody on that raid node is going to hit you. Now, does that matter? Who knows? Some of these characters, like Juggernaut uh, and Sabretooth, have some interesting uh, uses in certain game modes like Dark Dimension 2, uh, even Dark Dimension 3, just because they're relatively tanky, they do a pretty decent amount of damage. All in all, they have independent value, but the overall value of the Brotherhood team is functionally a war team. Everything else that you get from investing in the Brotherhood is just kind of gravy. But now that we're here, let's talk about breakpoints. So, we'll start with Toad. Toad doesn't need much to be great. Uh, starting with the Tier 4 investment, he gains slightly more dodge, and in war, he gains a ton more focus for himself and Brotherhood allies. Now we get to Magneto, you'll see why I haven't quite made this investment yet. Uh, Magneto also grows focus, but it is maxed out at 100% extra focus just from Toad's presence in war. They're a war team. This investment will probably be enough, especially when you have a ton of characters who have very high resist in the early stages of war, or maybe they start with deflex. You want to make sure that if the deflect fails, it sticks no matter what. I get it. It's a good investment. Uh, I don't think that... I think 80% is adequate, especially when combined with some of the other features you may use on this team. Uh, as for everything else Toad does, Leapfrog clears all negative effects from self. Since he tends to do it early, there very infrequently is 
a ton of negative effects on a character, especially that early in, in a fight. He's relatively quick. 30% uh, extra damage, not big deal. Chain to 4 to 5 adjacent targets, as opposed to... If Magneto went first, they're all together anyway, so you're just hitting everybody. It's a good investment, but I don't think it's worthwhile. Acid Spray is an adjacent target. It already extends all the duration. All this does is make it do slightly more damage. Again, it's a damage investment. He's not the damage dealer, so it's up to you. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, and this kind of goes the same with his basics. There are about two things that you could justify on Toad. I don't. I haven't found the need for them. My team is very capable of beating the teams it's supposed to anyway, but you might. So, moving to Mystique. Mystique is kind of strange. Mystique is uh, incredibly good at doing very specific things sometimes. Starting with Subterfuge, a lot of text, right? It's going to take a while. I don't see a reason why we ever need to put Tier 4s in this. Uh, the always assist on non-attack abilities. That's actually more of a Marauders thing uh, than a Brotherhood thing. Because the Marauders do have a handful of more non-attack abilities than the Brotherhood. As a matter of fact, I don't believe the Brotherhood has anything but one non-attack ability, and that's Juggernaut's Taunt. So for the Brotherhood team, the Evade is not that important, and the Always Assist on non-attack abilities, also not that important. So for the Brotherhood's case, not there. But everything else, on spawn, 50% chance to gain Evade, cool, 1000% resistance to bleed, whatever. On non-cone Magneto or Mr. Sin... Oh, God, I can't even read this. There's so much text on this. Basically, she works with both teams. She's a little bit better with Sinister. She's a lot better with Magneto and Sinister. There's almost no situations you'd like to use both of them together, unless you're having fun with something, so don't worry about this tier 4. Shapeshifter. It says attack primary target. Mystique doesn't actually do damage. The value on this is the fact that that target uh, gets hit by his opponent's team or her opponent's team, for a very large boost in attack damage to its basic. A lot of times you'll see if someone has a Black Bolt, especially on Arena, and Mystique gets lucky and rolls the dice correctly in the 1 and 4, Black Bolt targets that character, Bob's your uncle, that character's dead, can't be rezzed. Super fun, right? Uh, when you upgrade it, uh, her damage, again, doesn't actually matter, but the extra damage on the assist... Eh, very infrequently does it make that much of a difference. No need for tier 4s here. Infiltrate, incredibly interesting. Attacks primary target, then attacks two additional targets without stealth for some damage. Attack all additional targets that do have stealth. Clear stealth, oh my god, so many words. If this enemy had stealth, gain stealth. If no enemies, I'm sorry, had stealth, so cool. Uh, this ability does not remove stealth from the primary target. So if everyone has stealth, whatever. If Magneto is an ally, this attack is unavoidable. If Sinister is an ally, flip one positive effect to a negative effect on each target. Now, this is relevant because it will clear the stealth before that happens. So it won't ever flip stealth, it'll only remove the stealth and then flip whatever they happen to have on themselves. Uh, when you tier for it, uh, it attacks three additional targets that don't have stealth. More or less, it's kind of an arrayed ability, like, you'll just hit everybody, more or less. Uh, if Mr. Sinister is now, I flip two positive effects. Again, this is a Marauders upgrade, not a Brotherhood upgrade. Don't need it if you're going to use them on the team together. Shouldn't be an issue. Uh, Mimic Strike. This is kind of her major thing. Uh, she doesn't do a lot of damage. It's really about the fact that she copies positive effects uh, with every hit. And if this is present, if Magneto's present, uh, it's three positive effects per hit. Kind of huge. Uh, and of course, if Magneto is an ally, it's all positive effects per hit. This could be a lot of heal stacks. <laughs> I've seen it. I've hit a Luke Cage and copied his heal stacks multiple times. Now, whether or not uh, this matters, that's up to you. I don't think it's personally worth it. Uh, I think that the core of the team is going to do fine without it. But unlike the other ones, this is truly a brotherhood investment over a marauder's investment so you can do it but i wouldn't necessarily recommend it pyro is great that's it uh pyro already gains extra focus so his base focus is 20 percent extra 
Whenever he's attacked, he gains speed bar. You can gain a little bit more speed bar and a little bit extra focus with tier fours, which might be relevant to you. He might need that extra speed bar because he might be super squishy, because he is super squishy. If Magneto is an ally, when the enemy drops below 50% health, apply heal block. Uh, not necessary, but, you know, in case you're just needing a little bit more, not survivability necessarily, but speed for uh, AoEs that might happen to hit him, this could add up. That said, he's very squishy. Usually, if he's taking that much hit, many hits, uh, it's not going to be like that one less hit killed him. Like, he was going to die anyway. So, for me, never really worth it. Firecrafting, ready on turn two, so it's not immediately going to happen. It's damage. Uh, there are no major bleeds, but if Magneto's an ally, it extends the bleeds by a duration of one. Uh, the two-turn disrupt might be relevant, but it's very infrequent that when the Brotherhood gets going, turns last much longer than two turns anyway, so... Meh. Also, a lot of Pyro's damage is backloaded with his bleed stacks, which is why he has very high damage stat, but a very low multiplier when this happens, so... I've seen cases for this, maybe not so much anymore, but it's still useful. Pyrotechnics, uh, this is the one that I tier for the day I got Pyro. It's kind of worth it. More or less the difference between the two is uh, how many bleed stacks, and more importantly, the percentage damage of the bleed stacks. Bleed stacks get stronger the higher the tier level of the ability that places them. Uh, I believe it's 135 or 155%. I don't actually remember the specific number. All I know is it's the maximum amount. And since Pyro's most most damage is backloaded on bleed stacks, like a lot of the symbiotes are, or characters like uh, Graviton, that's where you get a lot of the value. So you attack the primary target and adjacent targets, which if Magneto pulled them together is everybody, for 180% damage. They get two bleed for two turns. Then you clear two positive effects from each target. That's relevant because it won't apply the bleed stacks if the characters had immunity, but it will remove the immunity pretty much no matter what, as long as it's there. If Magneto is an ally, clear all positive effects from each target. Kind of goes the same way. The bleed stacks might not stick if the character has them. It's just basically in how it, it times out. Um, but all in all, this is the most damage Pyro is going to do for the most part. So this is a tier 4 that I found was very useful, and I haven't regretted since. Basic. By the time you're using Pyro's basic... If you haven't won yet, you're probably not gone. So I'm not doing an extra 30% damage. The good news is it is another adjacency attack, so he is hitting a lot of people. You'll get a little bit of value out of it. It's just not much. Pyro's kind of self-contained. No questions here. Uh, Blob. <sighs> Blob's really, really strange. Blob, in order to counter certain teams, need to needs to have high enough offense. Now the note is here. On spawn, he gains offense up for two turns. The purpose of that is not that he does damage. It's to make sure characters that target high offense, like just off the top of my head, Coulson has an attack that targets the highest damage. Uh, Cyclops has an attack that affects the highest damage. Some of the uh, Mercs, the Taskmaster. So this entire point of that offense up is to make his damage stat gain an extra 50%. You know, that's all offense up does. You get 50% extra attack. His damage stack goes up, by definition, he will have the highest damage. When a Brotherhood ally drops below 50% health, gain taunt. This is a reflexive taunt. That is a beautiful thing on a team where your tank is actually a damage dealer and juggernaut, so he actually can survive that well. On enemy turn, apply one deflect up to a maximum of three to adjacent allies. Uh, this is where things get a little bit clever. You could put him next to your squishier characters to give him a little bit more deflect if he's not taunting. But then again, they'll be more susceptible to AoE, so... Yeah. Gain 40% resistance, Brotherhood gains 40% resistance, 15% chance to gain counterattack, 15% uh, chance per Brotherhood ally. Now, the only reason to invest in this is if you want him counterattacking every time. The extra resistance is good, but not necessary. Uh, it's this. It's what he wanted to be 25 per Brotherhood ally, obviously on a team of four Brotherhood characters, he will have a 100% chance uh, to counterattack. And if you really track it, uh, if he starts on his own with 25, uh, he only needs three other Brotherhood characters. It's close enough that it's not quite worth it, but if you want to make sure, that's how you do it. Belly flop, just damage. Meat shield, just damage. Heavy handed. 
Damage is okay, but the reduced speed bar by one, this happens when he assists. Is that relevant? Or when he counters too? So is that relevant? Kinda. So he'll reduce the target speed bar by an extra 5%, so 20%. That might be enough. If the target has disrupted, mm, not for me. Blob is kind of just a meat shield. All you really have to worry about about Blob is making sure his stats are high. Um, his counter attacks are what they are. Nothing really you can do about them. But Blob doesn't actually need much, which is great news. Just put gear on him and call it a day. Magneto. Now, Magneto is all of this. He's the everything. He's the missing piece. So, of course, he has to have a kit that matches it. Uh, on spawn, field speed bar by 15%. 15% speed bar per Brotherhood ally on enemy crit. If any enemy crits, anyone, speed up to self and all Brotherhood allies. Huge. Gain 10,000 resistance against taunt. That's pretty obvious. Brotherhood allies gain 10,000 resistance against taunt. You already know why. Uh, gain 60% resistance. Brotherhood allies gain 60% resistance. 60% focus. 30% max health. I mean... He already has given out 60% focus. If Toad's on the team, without... Uh, I'm sorry. Without this investment, it's 50% focus, I believe. So, it's 50 without tier 4's on him. And if Toad's on the team, it's 80. They have 130% uh, added focus before tier 4's. Why did I increase this? Because everything goes up, and all of these are so important. Like, it's just so many numbers. Makes your team healthier, gives them more resistance. It, everything just lines up speed. It, it's so good that this is one of the... If you only have one investment to make, this is the one to make. Uh, magnetic Vortex. Surprisingly, the damage doesn't actually matter on this attack, because who cares how much damage it does? This is what matters. Pull all enemies up to two spaces toward the primary target. Uh, then attack the targets, which is after the pull. Uh, all of the enemies is the target, by the way. For 210 damage and apply blind. Now, some characters are going to resist this, like Jessica Jones, uh, a defensed up Black Bolt. They're just not going to go anywhere. Characters with super high resistance, that's where you're going to want those tier 4s we talked about for the focus. But even then, it's not crazy. This attack is unavoidable, which means it's always going to hit the characters, even if he's blinded uh, and cannot be counterattacked. That's just a cute little ability to prevent, like, shield from going nuts on them or mercs or whatever. That's just kind of what this is. Now, this is one of the best abilities in the game. Uh, that said, the damage you get from adding to it doesn't make too much of a difference. Doesn't really, like, if it uh, added more blind or two turns of blind, I would have done this way, way sooner. But I have no interest in this. Uh, polarized Beam. This was kind of a flex choice I made a while ago. It increased the amount of damage by like 30%, and then it removed all positive effects on the target. Now, again, pay really close attention to the wording. Deals damage, plus piercing damage, apply disrupted, apply slow, remove all positive effects. This is the order of operations, so if you try to remove all positive effects, two things to note. The first, if they have uh, immunity, there's a chance none of it happens. The second, all of these disrupteds and slows, remove positive effects, they all go through a resistance check. So even though it says it does it, and I thought that when it said this attack is unavoidable, it meant it couldn't be resisted, I was wrong. It was a long time ago, Magneto came out in the first year, we didn't know better. This is what we thought. We found out. That's not how it works. That said, it's still a phenomenal ability, and it's really good in fights where you don't necessarily want to use Magneto's uh, ult on turn one where there's maybe a better time to pull everybody up, like maybe against the Asgardians, if you uh, know that pulling them together is not going to matter too much, but you really want to make sure Sif isn't uh, you know, going to taunt on turn, this is where this ability comes in. It's a very useful ability. Uh, it's also a pretty decent damage. I think it's one of his best damaging attacks, but that is what it is. Uh, ma magnetic Force damage... Slightly more damage with tier fours. Mm. This is kind of the once everyone's together and you've all done all your cool stuff, maybe you could pick off a couple. I wouldn't tier four this for anything. Uh, I would tier four this if they said you have one free basic tier four for a mutant legendary character, mainly because I've already tier four. Games, basic, but 
That's it. That's pretty much all I got. Juggernaut. Juggernaut is uh, phenomenal uh, on the Brotherhood team and outside of him, much like Magneto. Uh, the Brotherhood team does not require him, but he helps a lot. And uh, with that core that we talked about, the Pyro, Magneto, and Brotherhood, you can start adding additional characters like Carnage and Venom, or uh, we Boomhood, which was Crossbones and Kingpin. A whole bunch of good options for these characters. Uh, Juggernaut is not... He's a tank outside of the Brotherhood. He is actually a better tank outside of the Brotherhood uh, because when he's... You'll see. On turn, gain charge up to a maximum of four. On spawn, clear all but one stack of charge. If any charge were cleared, fill speed bar by 40%. It's not 40% per charge, but that's cool. If Magneto is an ally, when an enemy attacks him, fill speed bar by 15% for this character and all protector allies. Now, I don't know about you, but when I have my tank taunting, I don't want him to go faster. I want him to go slower and take the damage. So when he's on the Brotherhood team, he's not so much a tank so much as he's the battering ram that you use to clear everybody once they've been pulled together. So that when you taunt on the Brotherhood, it doesn't make him a better tank. It makes him uh, take his turn faster while being very unlikely to die. And we'll see what that looks like later. He gains some percent max health and resistance. He already has uh, a ridiculous amount of resistance when he has immunity, which means it's really hard to ship buffs off him. He also has a ridiculous resistance against stun, just on his own, very hard to stun juggernauts. He gains a little bit more resistance just on his own with this, and if Magneto is an ally, he gets slightly more turn meter, which will help the combo go a little bit faster. None of this is worth investing in. Crushing charge. Uh, attack primary and adjacent targets for 300 and I believe it's 320 before tier 4, so 380 here is like 60% increase. Uh, damage is increased by 80% per charge. The reason I tier 4 this a long time ago was because that tier 4 investment was basically like adding another charge. So he did more or less the same amount of damage at 3 charges that he used to have to wait an extra turn to have 4 charges to do. And that was usually good enough for arena fights. Now, he just happens to do a lot. I wouldn't necessarily recommend tier 4 this, uh, unless you really like Juggernaut, or you're using him for some absolutely crazy thing like Dark Dimension, maybe. But other than that, this is kind of an investment that's... Uh, I don't regret it. It helped a lot when I used it, but I don't need it anymore. Immovable Object is his taunt. Uh, gain taunt, defense up for two turns, immunity, death proof, regeneration. Uh, with tier 4s, he gains two regeneration. No, he doesn't, because you're not tier 4 this. Because if the Juggernaut taunts, it's because he's going to ult. Uh, the fact that he gains taunt for two turns still doesn't make him a tank. It means that he's going to have taunt for two turns. He's going to take a lot of damage. He's going to take both of those turns really quickly. But after his charge, whoever's left over, he's only going to be able to base it. His basic is awesome, though. So I, don't, I wouldn't necessarily invest in that. It'll help him, but not greatly. Uh, overwhelming Blow. Attack primary target for 250 damage. Gain one charge up to a maximum of four. 80% chance to gain ability energy. Man, I fought myself for almost a year whether or not I tier four this. What's the difference between 80% and always? Well, every time he takes a turn, that basic always granting him energy means he's gonna be able to taunt and, char and charge again faster. How many situations is that relevant? Honestly, not many. For me, it was only relevant in Dark Dimension 2, as Juggernaut was one of the characters I brought in way back in the day. Uh, and even then, 80% chance to gain the ability energy was close enough to 100 that it, it almost never made a difference. That said, if you're in for a sure thing, and you he is a damage dealer, might as well. There are worse investments on this team. This one would be fine. That's it. Juggernaut, just really strong. Uh, and then Sabretooth. Pay no attention to how strong my Sabretooth is. This is a personal preference. I like Sabretooth. He is cool. Uh, and I'll explain why as we go. That said, none, nothing you see here is required. So let's talk about why. First, gain 5% damage uh, per mutant or brotherhood ally. And that's any mutant. Not just villain. Anyone. Uh, if Sinister is an ally, gain 20% crit chance. Huge. On turn... Heal for 15% of this character's max health. When this character drops below 50% health, gain death proof. Gain 25% chance to assist on non-attack abilities. Gain 25% chance to assist on non-attack abilities per Marauder's ally. 
This is kind of what we were talking about with Mystique before. This uh, tier four is for mm, more or less just the Marauders. It, what it does do is it goes from 10 to 15% of its heal. Because I have high red stars and because I use the Marauders quite frequently, this investment ended up making him very usable in Dark Dimension for me. That said, the Dark Dimension 3, that said, this isn't necessary for anything. The extra 10% is kind of the same as that counterattack we saw on some other characters before. It makes them guaranteed to do the thing, and since the Marauders have way more non-attack abilities, it should be fine. Uh, also, just that pure 25% chance to assist on non-attack abilities and per Marauder Ally, this doesn't mean that if a Marauder Ally does it. So if Sabretooth with the three Marauders are present, he has a 100% chance to attack on a any character's non-attack ability. And just off the top of your head, if you haven't seen it before, Ultron has one non-attack ability, and he summons three dudes who also have three non-attack abilities. That's a lot of extra damage. Uh, and since it's an assist, you'll see why I put tier fours in this basic. Uh, Blood Rush, just damage. Um, that's it. You get a t it's a ton of damage, but it, you know if Magneto or Sinister or an ally, this can't be, can't be counterattacked. So no big deal. It's just a giant chain of attacks uh, against in the Brotherhood team. This team pretty much hits everybody always. Uh, and the Marauders, not so much if there's, like, you know, summons or whatever. But he's going to do a lot of damage, so if you want him to do more damage, here it is. Me, never needed it. Uh, Thrash. Now, a lot of people think this is a chain attack. It is not. This is an AoE attack. Attack all adjacent targets. Um, that means if all the characters are stealth, he doesn't care. It doesn't follow the same rules as... Anything else. It just looks like a chain attack, but it is, in fact, a giant AoE. So, uh, again, this is a ton of damage. It does a ton of damage to taunting targets, if the target has taunt, which is usually his way of kind of breaking through stuff. Uh, and it does a little bit of extra damage to primary targets, but... Again, it's just damage. If I wanted my Sabretooth to have a very large number, I tier 4 these. I don't care. He does everything he needs to do right now. Claw Rake. This is just damage, but like I said, because he's assisting all the time, based on his Marauder's comp, uh, this getting slightly higher means his assists are doing more damage. Kind of like how Punisher on the Defenders works. You just want him to do as much damage as possible. That said, uh, because I have a very high investment in my Sabretooth, that's why I did it. I don't think he requires any of these on any team, but on the Marauders it gets a little bit better. As for break points. Now again, I'm gonna just say it one last time, Magneto, Juggernaut, and Pyro are the core of the team. So when I discuss from now on break points, uh, I don't care if you're using Sabretooth or Blob, uh, Mystique and Toad, Mystique and, and Blob, it, whatever combination you use, uh, this is still where the break points are gonna go because the assumption with break points is that the characters are at the very least balanced. Now for a lot of players like me, you can see that uh, characters like Sabretooth, Juggernaut, and Magneto uh, were very high invested. It took a while to get Blob, and Blob's only four star to the point where I could use him on the team. Same with Toad. They came at a time after I invested in some of these characters. Break points for this team. Uh, once you get Magneto, once you have the core of that team together, uh, whoever the other two characters are on it, 100k, you're winning war fights. And you're winning punch-ups. What Magneto does for the fights is incredible. Uh, and I don't mean hard countering specific teams. 100k, that's you know 25, 20k each character. That's usually the investment you need in order for them to do what they need to do. 150k as a full team, you probably at 30k each. These characters probably are at least like six, 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 four. You might have a good star count, at least probably five stars on a lot of them. Maybe some good reds. You're punching up. You're punching up 50k on, on war combos. You're officially a war counter team now. Now, there's a difference between the new Brotherhood, Brotherhood 2.0, with Blob and Toad and what they can be, and then what the original Brotherhood can be. And it's, it's close, 
but ultimately look at them in the same way you look at Fantastic Four. Sure, they have teams that they can hard counter, but also there are teams that they just will beat. You know, if you see a very strong team of a handful of characters like Brawlers with CM, the Brotherhood can beat them. You know, they can punch up relatively high. You just have to kind of learn the fight and know how to do it. So the breakpoints for this team is war related and it's about 150k. Once the team's 150k, you can start feeling confident when using them in war. And the higher they go is the highest level of punch ups they can do. And usually it's going to take a team to be about 180 to 200k. Uh, and that's just in where the investments are going to drop for them to become the official counter team that you hear about. Now, uh, Brotherhood 2.0, which is the Trinity, Blob, and Toad, uh, that team is pretty good at countering Colson Shield, pretty good at countering the Mercs. Um, not as great against the Asgardians on that comp, but they can. It's just not as reliable as or you need a pretty decent investment line in order to punch up against them. Uh, the original Brotherhood team, they're kind of like a skeleton key. You just set them and forget them, send them after somebody, and, and call it a day. So those are the things that you need to know going into it. But once a team is between 180 and 200k, you can honestly say that you see about a 100k punch up. You don't. It's not a waste of an attack to try to beat that team. It's reasonable that you could. It's still going to be a little bit RNG, but it's reasonable, that kind of thing. Uh, because of that, right, because this team is really good at war, has uses outside, but not as a team. Just the individual characters, just Magneto and, you know, Juggernaut. And obviously Sabretooth and Mystique are phenomenal on two different teams. But that's not what we're doing here. We're not assessing how individual characters matter. We're assessing teams. This team is really good on war. This team itself is acceptable in raids as like an assassin team to take out one node. Because of that, uh, even though I love Magneto, and I love Juggernaut, and I clearly love Sabretooth, I can't in any good conscience give this team anything higher than like an A- minus rating, which is I think my first minus I've ever given, because I really don't want to give them a B. So listen to that. They're not a B team because of just how good they are at war and relatively good in arena, but no one's going to make an argument that the full Brotherhood team is the best arena team. And if they are, it's not going to be for long. No one's going to bring a full Brotherhood team into Dark Dimension or a raid and then just go coast to coast without spending a ton of heals. Um, they just don't have that sustainability. So when you look at a team like this, you have to be kind of happy with what you get out of them, but you also have to understand what you're getting out of them, which is a really good raid team with a handful of dabblings in other places. So they're like an A-minus team. Fun to get. Will improve your early game experience by a lot because you get Magneto. He's one of the strongest characters. He gives you a whole new outlook on what you're doing. But ultimately, it's another one of those teams where if you never invest in it won't kill you. You know, they're not really necessary for much. Uh, you actually just kind of accidentally unlock Magneto. That said, I still think getting him early uh, is more important than like focusing on him later. He does lose out a little bit as time goes on, uh, especially with characters like the Asgardians around. Uh, that said, that makes it a little bit unfortunate because they are relatively early to farm. He is a relatively easy to access legendary. Just not with the longevity that some of the other uh, teams provide for you. But they are always going to be a good war team, so you got that going for you. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.